a party of programs that will take us out of this sick malaise into which we have sunk. The tendency towards violence as the first line of responding to conflicting situations will inevitably continue in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And it will inevitably continue in the absence of appropriately responsible leadership. The national security forces of this country are themselves victims of the very frustration and violence that has come to characterize Vincentian society. It is the reason you see an increasing number of police officers being hauled before the nation's court. They are part and they exemplify the frustration of our youth. They exemplify what we are being given. They recognize that what they have been told, what they have been promised is not being delivered. And they understand that clearly. And so they join the rest of the frustrated society in seeking their own solutions to the challenges confronting them in their daily lives. They recognize a certain level of lawlessness that has crept into the system. That even the hallowed halls of parliament, it can be revealed that the government does as it pleases from time to time then why shouldn't they? If those who are designed to make the laws of our country show themselves not to be the upholders of said laws, then what, choice, what choices are we leaving for our frustrated youth? Our youth recognize That the, the parliament has recently passed a resolution that allows the government to spend 10 million EC dollars more annually on unforeseen expenditure. After the fact, eh, adhocracy at work, after the fact, they're now doing that. Right? So you can spend via special warrants. Up to 35 million now. It used to be 25. But of course, they went beyond the 25. Right? And you have Camilo Gonzalez, the Minister of Finance, promising Parliament there will not be a repeat of the situation in which his government took years, five years in some cases, to bring special warrants to the National Assembly for, for approval. So the youths of this country know, just as the government knew, that it was operating with not adhering to the law. By going and doing special warrants without bringing them to parliament. The government knew, and so too did the government officials who were asked to prepare them. But fear of losing their jobs allow them to comply, to be complicit. Allow them to be complicit. That's our system. So it must not surprise us that our youths are frustrated by what passes for governance in our society. Today, no one speaks of the once vaunted contract with civil society. No one speaks of the social, spiritual, and redemption charter. These documents appear to have lost their intent as the society is overtaken by social decadence. Do not forget, dear friends, that in the manifesto of 2001, the ULP administration committed itself to redressing the situation on crime. 
it has grown exponentially since then. But you're listening to Just Another Look. You hear it only on Nice Radio. But we want to tell you there, friends, since the start of the coronavirus, we in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, while viewing, hearing, and reading about its growth from inception, from inception, through to the current pandemic, appeared as though we were immune to its creeping paralysis-like movement across the globe. Our behavior with regard to COVID-19 is much the same as that which we have adopted in the case of tropical storms, hurricanes, earthquakes, and volcanic eruption. We have simply taken everything for granted through to the point of panic once we are awake to the reality of the pandemic. The average Vincentian may well have taken his or her cue in respect of COVID-19 from the political leadership of this country. We want to repeat that. The average Vincentian may well have taken his or her cue in respect of the COVID-19 from the political leadership of this country. Where, from our vantage point, the attitude was one of sheer nonchalance. Like so many other governments around the world, we took too long to act. Like so many governments around the world, we took too long to come to the nation with truth, fulsome truth. Indeed, as happened with SARS some years ago, which we were essentially spared. Once Vincentian started to talk about COVID-19 in public, the government's response was predictable. The response was reference to the laws that speak to legal action against those deemed to be engaged in spreading panic. You don't bring the information to the fore. The people have to use social media to cajole you as a government into coming forth with information. And yet, among your responses is the quote-unquote veiled threat, or so it seems, that you could be charged and jailed for spreading panic. What was the intention of that? Why would a government in a democratic society as ours, with a long-standing democratic tradition, be anxious to caution people about the laws and the way in which they could be applied to have you incarcerated. Why would we do that? Why do we believe that the only way to solve problems is to appear to be threatening people? That is slavery. That is back to the old colonial slave system. And it's the reason we say that nothing has changed. It's the same old khaki pants politics. All that happened is that we have different people doing it. The government's response appeared to be one that largely ignored the fact that in today's Vincentian society, People are no longer living in isolation from the global environment. They're not living in a cocoon outside of the global environment. They are impacted by it. They have access to it and it has access to them. If people around the world were contracting a virus that led to the deaths of significant proportions of their respective populations. And at the same time, global medical experts were pronouncing that it was essentially a variant of previous strains of viruses, but behaves significantly different 
then we ought to have expected Vincentians to become decidedly bothered. But we hid behind the fact that we don't know and we don't know and nobody knows and nobody knows. Further, you know, since most Vincentians know the truth about our healthcare delivery system in this country compared to those of the developed nations and they watch how challenging the COVID-19 has exposed severe weaknesses and limitations in the healthcare system of advanced industrial nations. Again, one should have anticipated that the tensions would become extremely scared. You see people dying all around the world in countries that have better healthcare systems. We know how to take the commerce pronouncement that we have one of the best medical schools in the, in the, in the, in the world that pe people coming here to set up medical schools. We have one of the best medical hospitals for teaching. We know how to take that. If we are honest with ourselves, we would be disposed to understanding why Vincentians would have grown scared once they started following the news reports from the World Health Organization. Not gossip, from the World Health Organization and health experts from the numerous countries struck by the virus. You see, some of our politicians have been chiding the incensions that say the incensions that cause in panic. It's the incensions that don't know what they're talking about. But if it's mentioned that you're talking about, follow the international news. They have seen, heard, listened to, and read information coming from the World Health Organization. Why should our leaders be assume that it's gossip they've been listening to? When they listen to you, they're listening to gossip. When they're listening to you, it's pure facts. But then when they listen to you, they have to come to an understanding that what you tell them as fact is relative. And you have the heart to come in public and try them for spreading rumors. Not everybody been spreading rumors. And you can't always identify who has been spreading it anyway. And we are also aware that politicians are very adept at starting rumors. So don't try that. Don't try that long line at all, at all, at all. If we are honest with ourselves, we would be disposed to understanding why Vincentians would have grown scared once they started following the news reports from the World Health Organization and health experts from the numerous countries struck by the virus. But we were not disposed to doing so. We were not disposed to understanding the reactions of the average Vincentian. Instead, those in authority, the slave masters of the current era, the plantation owners of the current era, those in authority, themselves uncertain about the virus and its expansion across the globe, sought to make it appear that only the faint of heart were likely to be scared. In some instances, they either chided or downright belittled those who started running scared and they accused others of causing panic. It is not at all easy for Vincentians listening to experts from across the globe and from different countries, including, including the World Health Organization, and including those dealing with current cases, some of whose patients would have died, to simply stop being scared 
because some politician or some wealthy and or academically successful individual told them otherwise. So don't be scared because we say so. You're stupid if you get scared. Perhaps the most insensitive response to the COVID-19 from our vantage point came from this country's Prime Minister, Dr. Gonzalez. Eyewitness News dated 14th March 2020 stated, and we quote, Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez on Saturday encouraged intra-regional travel as a means of dampening the impact of COVID-19 on CARICOM economies. End of quote. Now, clearly, <laughs> clearly, clearly, hello, where was Dr. Gonzalez? Who was he listening to, if he listened to anybody at all, to be making this kind of statement on National Heroes Day? The Prime Minister chose his speech at the obelisk on Dorchester Hill, a tribute to the country's Lord National Hero Paramount Chief Joseph Chatelier on National Heroes Day. He made this speech. Eh? That's the day he chose to make his speech. So he chose that day. Right? He chose that day to utter the faithful words that shall forever haunt him and his political legacy. This one he can't rub off. This will always haunt your comrade. Because nobody in the world today can believe that a prime minister with your academic credentials would have reached a stage where these words would have been uttered on National Heroes Day in St. Vincent and the Grenadines when COVID-19 start ravaging the world. What it is, you weren't following what was happening? You weren't following what was happening globally? By the time he had uttered these words on the 14th of March, Trinidad had already recorded cases. Jamaica had already recorded cases. And we were bothered already about what was happening in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So what, what, what prompted you to go this route? I mean, it's one thing to want to be popular. It's one thing to want to be innovative and creative. But this is not creative. This is certainly not creative. The average Vincentian who had been following the spread of the coronavirus up to that time, having heard the words uttered by Gonzales, must have been shocked to their wit's end. Gonzales' statement reflected a level of ignorance to what was happening with the virus globally and in the region. It reflected a level of ignorance to what was happening globally and in the Caribbean. Gonzalez's statement reflected an almost incomprehensible insensitivity to the well-being of the very Vincentians he has so often claimed to shower with his labor love since taking office in 2020. Close review of Gonzalez's statement may well have led some to believe that this was not merely a senior moment, but that he may have taken leave of his senses completely. Eyewitness News quoted Gonzalez thus, and we quote, Look, we have to think creatively in relation to how we are going to sustain our economy. Services are important. Tourism services. Yachts will come and planes will come. We are strengthening the security for the yachts, the surveillance and the management from a health standpoint. End of quote. Just another look says incredible. Incredulous. Utter political and economic trite. 
You see, the foregoing are only some of the responses that Gonzalez's statement ought to have conjured up in the average Vincentian. To say nothing of the peoples of our neighboring CARICOM countries to whom he may have been referring. If Gonzalez's statement is reflective of his capacity relative to creating thinking, creative thinking, then we are in dire straits. We want to repeat that. If Gonzalez's statement is reflective of his capacity relative to creative thinking, then we are in dire straits. Gonzalez's statements appear to fly appears to fly in the face of the global and Caribbean realities. With advanced industrial relations, with advanced industrial nations literally struggling to contain the virus, let alone combat it, Gonzalez apparently stands alone as the only political leader capable of thinking creatively that a global pandemic offers us in small, open, and vulnerable nations in the Caribbean a very unique opportunity to generate revenue by encouraging intra-Caribbean travel. That has to be a first. That is history. That can never be erased from his political legacy. Never. It is difficult to imagine the audacity of Gonzalez declaring, quote, services are important. Tourism services. Yachts will come and planes will come. But Gonzalez appears to have thought the rest of the world to be utterly idiotic. For him to have convinced himself, because he can't convince anybody else, that yachts and planes will come was itself simply incredible. It means he has not been following what has been happening internationally. Where are they coming from? People are closing their borders. Gonzalez's statement came against the backdrop of scores of Vincentian's condemnation of this country's government's allowance of a cruise liner into our country after Dominica and Barbados had refused refused them landing privileges. That is the backdrop. In many respects, it was as if Gonzalez was confident that God is a Vincentian and that we have no reason to fear the coronavirus and its impact on our people. But in case we feel that Gonzalez was done with this, he also he's also quoted as saying, quote, we are strengthening the security for the yachts, the surveillance and the management from a health standpoint, end of quote. And we ask, how facetious is Gonzalez? How incredible can he be? Gonzalez dared to tell those listening to his speech on our National Heroes Day that we are ready to receive people from neighboring islands by air and sea in the face of the coronavirus and that we should be all right because we are strengthening the security for the yachts, the surveillance and the management from a health standpoint. What utter rubbish. What security and surveillance are we conducting? Hell to eyes. And when did we start? That Gonzalez is further quoted as saying, quote, we have to encourage. If the Americans saying they are not encouraging travel, people to travel, and the Europeans say they are not encouraging people to travel, in the OECS, we have 650 persons. Trinidad is 1.3 million. Barbados, 300,000. And then there is Guyana with 700,000. We can have a market in this part in the southern and eastern Caribbean. End of quote. Is this for real? 
<laughs> Everybody is talking about social distancing. We are talking of people traveling in confined spaces on yachts and planes for different lengths of period. Imagine that. Imagine that. This we dealing with on National Heroes Day, you know. <laughs> Listen, people, reviewing Gonzalez's speech on Saturday last is all the more sickening. That none of his ministers dared correct him is not at all surprising since they all seem to be fearful of him. They all appear dependent on him and his largesse. And so are fearful to point the errors of his ways. Certainly, in the current situation, where his leadership faculties appeared, appear to have failed him miserably. Good sense has led several of our neighbors to close their own borders for all but their returning neighbors, natives. So scared are they of the spread of the virus and the devastation that it has already wrought in several parts of the world. But Gonzalez remains very upbeat. He remains very upbeat with regard to his stance on bolstering intra-regional travel. This is Gonzalez as quoted in the Eyewitness News. Quote, You notice what I'm trying to do to see if we can still keep some hotel trade within the region and also some yachting business. You can't lock yourself off from the world. We have to take responsible steps. End of quote. Of course, Gonzalez certainly did not appear at the time to have been appropriately aware of what was happening in Italy, which has had no choice but to lock itself off from the rest of the world. The very thing that Gonzalez says we can't do. And now, Italy is not the only country that lock off itself from the rest of the world. We have to understand the seriousness of this. Yes, we have to understand the serious implications for the economy. But if we don't have people, if our people die, what economy are we talking about? What economy are we talking about? With more than 1,300 deaths in the last three days of this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Italy must be a stark reminder to Gondals of just how much he is off base in his creative thinking relative to how to redress the economic impact of the coronavirus. He has missed the boat altogether. One is therefore uncertain precisely who in the CARICOM region shares Gonzalez's creative economic genius in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. One of the criticisms leveled at Gonzalez when it was discovered that we allowed a cruise liner to berth and offload its passengers after Dominica and Barbados had refused these privileges to the same vessel and its passengers, was that it was highly irresponsible and seemed to suggest that he and his administration were prepared to place money above the general well-being of the Byzantine people. One of the major problems confronting Gonzales appears to be his seeming penchant for grandstanding. As has happened when he, we had tropical storms and the threat of hurricanes, Gonzal seems to think himself the chief spokesperson. One is not sure whether it is sheer hubris or some other seeming malady, but Gonzal seems almost operating as if under the impression that if he speaks on almost every matter, the electorate 
would somehow more readily believe the content. So, as expected, Gonzalez now appears almost as though he is the lead on COVID-19. Now, he's not repeating the nonsense of what he stated on March 14th. Instead, we have to contend with his boring presentations on what the government is now doing, almost ad hoc, to address the coronavirus and its potential impact. But Gonzalez does not now seem capable to understanding that an ever-increasing number of incensions have begun to see through him and his outdated politics. He has not actually brought anything new to the national discourse for several years. And what we are getting these days is the warmed-over political diatribe. One can almost conclude that Gonzalez, a refreshed version since after the backlash of last Saturday's address, is now an expert on coronavirus and all the actions that must be taken to address the situation. Once more, as expected, Gonzalez takes center stage. The average Vincentian cannot expect any apologies from that from and for that Gonzalez speech of March 14th. That is almost always unlikely. From here onwards, Gonzalez will become the nation's ultimate lead on COVID-19. You can bet on that. Of course, while Gonzalez has spoken about Cuban doctors and nurses, he has not yet made mention of accessing supplies of the Cuban drug Interferon Alpha 2D, which several countries, including some of the Caribbean and the World Health Organization, have already been in discussions with and in some cases accessed and used. We'll probably do this after our Caribbean neighbors have shown us the way. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, by the way, remains a rather amazing animal. On SVG TV's evening news dated Friday the 20th of March 2020, yesterday in fact, we had Minister Frederick Stevenson suggesting in a speech that some people are angry. He said some are scared, some are worried, bothered, concerned, but some are angry. And this is with regard to the coronavirus. But he says that those are, who are angry were angry because they were listening to the wrong people. They were listening to the wrong people and wrong information. One can only hazard a guess that Stevenson was attempting to carry the, the political line of his party and government. That if you are critical of what they are doing, then you are one of the wrong persons to listen to. Politicians can and often do talk an awful lot of nonsense. Yeah? Stevenson missed the point. Much like Gonzales and much like the rest of their minions. Vincentians are angry. And you know why they are angry? They are not angry because they are listening to the wrong people. They are angry because the government took too long to bring themselves forward with information about what was happening in this country. Vincentians are angry because they had to force it out of the government that we had the one case. Vincentians are angry because they had to tell the nation, not the government, they had to tell the nation about someone who had returned from China, from studying in China. They were the ones who brought it out. The government responded after the fact. They've got, the people are angry because they were the ones who had to use social media to talk about the Chinese who had come back home, come back here, and who had gone back to their, their commune-style living in Cane Garden. That's why Vincentians are angry. Vincentians are angry because it had to take Harvey Farrell to get on a radio program 
as a former health educator, senior health educator, to inform the nation of some of the protocols and some of the measures, education and otherwise, that the government's Ministry of Health should have been taking ever since the start of the crisis? When Gonzales and they were in opposition, when they were in the early days of revolutionary thinking, they were the ones who reminded the nations all time and time again. When the developed world sneezes, we catch the cold. What has happened to that? Has anything changed? Has anything changed? Isn't that what you all were telling us as revolutionaries decades ago in UPM and others? That when the developed world sneezes, the, the underdeveloped world or the developing world catch the cold. Now it's the coronavirus. How long did we think it would take before it got here? Did we not know that this was a different type of virus? That it was behaving differently? Were we not all exposed to the same information on the international media from the World Health Organization? That's why people are angry, Stevenson. They're not angry because they're listening to the wrong people. If they listen to you all, they will not have had any information at all for a very long time. And you're not taking responsibility for that. Just like the Prime Minister, you as a minister are not taking the responsibility for your own failures and shortcomings in respect of informing the nation about this crisis. So don't come off and talk about people being angry because they're listening to the wrong people. Who should they listen to? They should listen to a prime minister who says we should open up our borders and have intra-regional travel. That's what they should be listening to. Come on, Stevenson, man. Come on. Come on. Is that what has happened to you within the party? That everybody has to take the same line of march instead of standing up on principle and on understanding based on knowledge and information and facts. What have we become? What have we become? And just like other politicians, you all reach a stage where you all believe that you can pontificate to everybody and people must just accept it because you're a politician. Where you got your information from? When you became politicians? When? And why do many believe, on both sides of the fence, by the way, once they enter politics, these politicians suddenly believe that they are almost infallible. Don't make those kinds of errors to chide us that people are angry because they listen to the wrong people. Ridiculous. Out of order. Unacceptable. Incredible. And incredulous. You see, those Vincentians who are angry in the face of the coronavirus are fed up with the country's near lethargic response to the virus. The government here behaved much like those of some of the advanced industrial relations that began by being secretive. Truth had to be dragged out of the government. Truth had to be dragged out of the government. Once more, once more, we had to wait on others to take the lead in telling us what the government should have been doing. Instead of accepting that the government engaged in one FOPA after another, the government is so steeped in its election mode that it cannot bring itself to apologizing to its people for its own intransigence. One of the possible reasons though, that the Gonzales social revolutionaries are currently concerned about has to do with the pending general elections. This is the conundrum in which Gonzales and his ministers find themselves. You see, in preparation for the general election, the ULP has already, as government, committed much of the finances it believes would facilitate winning the votes of the electorate. We're hearing about all sorts of projects, all sorts of infrastructure, infrastructural projects. So we're expending government resources on a lot of infrastructure, right? Because we need fanciful buildings and facilities to attract people. That wins votes. 
we still believe that right remember the plantation type thinking the more people see new things the more they're likely to vote for you same slavery concept okay nothing has changed but also as a party the party has already committed some of its finances to certain um, activities so as a government the party has some problems where is the money going to come from for this pandemic because it is unforeseen yeah and we have to pray god that it doesn't get serious but we want to win the election so without resources and i be, we believe that that is why the prime minister may have made the kind of error he made and ridiculous statement he made up up on Dorchester hill about promoting tourism because he recognizes that the resources will not be there so if he cannot accomplish the 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 he has to accomplish the infrastructural project if he wants to win the election but he also has to deal with this pandemic otherwise he will not win the election so where do these resources come from we have to go back to the beggar made policies we have to go looking for resources but as a party it also means that you may now find yourself having to divert some of your party resources that you have already allocated for your campaigning to other approaches because at the end of the day if people can't come out for the campaign you have to find other ways of getting to the people so just another look is of the view that this is the biggest conundrum facing the ulp both as a party and as the gov party in government at this particular juncture right so the existence of the covid 19 pandemic however means that the negative impact on the economy would create immense problems for the government in finding the additional resources it needs to cope if it is to win the election of course one option would be to reallocate some of the resources committed to some of the clear elections vote catching agenda but this is a hard decision and one will have to wait and see how long it would take before the government takes this difficult but important decision of much concern in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, however, is the safety of our healthcare providers. How are we addressing the matter of our nurses, our nursing assistants, and our doctors? What measures do we have in place to offer our healthcare providers that their health is appropriately being addressed? The situation that rapidly grew chaotic at the Milton Cato Memorial during the week served to show Vincentians that we are not sufficiently all on the same page. For a period of time, many were left pondering whether or not the left hand knew and knows what the right hand was and is doing. Enough said. But you know, friends, as always, we remind you of the disappearance of J8ZAX and J8SXY. They were two planes owned by SVG Air that disappeared in our airspace without a trace inside of four years of each other. Just another look keeps this in our memory. Largely because today, the 21st day of March 2020, marks 4,824 days since J8VAX disappeared and 3,514 days since J8SXY disappeared. We are not satisfied that justice has been served. And we keep it here because it is a smear on what passes for leadership and governance in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. If you think about it, you'd understand. Of course, we always end by reminding you of the sad case of Patricia Bowman, crushed to death on her way to work in her own car by debris falling from somebody's home the wall of somebody's home. This happened on the 19th of September 2008, a very rainy day, particularly rainy morning. But her husband, Alban Bowen, remembers her every single day as if it were yesterday. He remembers the behavior of those in authority on that fateful day, the 19th of September 2008. We keep saying, that the fact that this remains a case to be addressed 
is an indictment on our law fraternity, our legal fraternity. We say that without fear of contradiction. We well remember how the legal fraternity appeared to have rallied around Mark Williams after he had shot his girlfriend in front of the police headquarters on Juve morning. The legal fraternity came together after a colleague had committed murder. After a colleague had committed murder. But our legal fraternity sits by and watches as Alban Bowman comes to terms with this injustice. God help us. Enough said. You've been listening to another edition of Night nice Radio's Kalaloo presentation, Just Another Look. Just Another Look is an innovative, exciting, albeit decidedly provocative, and yes, yes, certainly controversial, socio-political analysis of issues of a local, regional, and international nature. Just Another Look is heard only on Night nice Radio, first aired on Saturdays at 6 p.m., which repeat broadcasts on Sundays at 9 p.m. Remember, you can catch us on the World Wide Web, www.nightradio.info. You can check out our Just Another Look blog, www.justanotherlook.com. Or you can hear us on YouTube. I am, of course, <laughs> Keith Joseph.